I'm Ranger Lisa, and I'm here in the Big Cypress National Preserve Outdoor Classroom. Hey guys, I'm Ranger Cat. So we're here today to talk about some of the wildlife that lives here in our outdoor classroom. And we're going to start with one of the small species that lives here, and that is a skunk. Now you probably know that skunks are kind of smelly. They like to come to our trash cans at night or if you leave dog or cat food outside. So we shouldn't do that. We don't want to attract them to our homes. But this is what we call a spotted skunk. We also have striped skunks here in South Florida. And they're a little bit bigger and have a big wide white stripe down their back. What do you have? Here we have a tiny little skunk skull. So if you guys check it out, you can see the little teeth that this animal has. They're sharp, which gives us indication as to what the skunk could possibly eat. Ranger Lisa, what do you think these teeth tell us? What do you think is in the diet of the skunk? Mm. Well, I know that skunks eat a variety of things. They might eat plants like berries and other plant parts, or they also eat meat. Ooh, that's what these canines tell us, that possibly this little animal is chewing on some meat. Like those, ripping and tearing yeah, it with those canines. Definitely. And then its back teeth look different too. Yeah, so its little back teeth are kind of flat, like molars, um, kind of like our molars, which are used for grinding. So that does tell us that the skunk eats additional things aside from um, meat that it needs these canines to tear apart. Do we know what that's called when they eat a variety of plant and animal things? Yeah, that is called an omnivore. So skunks are om omnivores. And, oh, and here's a picture of our spotted skunk. All right, well, I'd like to tell you about another small mammal that lives here in Big Cypress. In fact, it even has Big Cypress in its name. It's called the Big Cypress Fox Squirrel. And we have two kinds of squirrels here in South Florida too, the fox squirrel and the little gray squirrels that you might be more familiar with. The fox squirrels are pretty large. They have this big fluffy tail and they come in several different color uh, varieties. You might see some that look like this, kind of brown and tannish on their stomach. You might see them that look more orange and more brown. And there are even black ones. Some are all black and some have a black back and an orange stomach. So they look kind of like a Halloween animal. Very cool. Yeah. Where would we find these? We would probably find these in the cypress swamp. Mm -hmm. I think we would find the big cypress fox squirrel possibly in the pine lands. Mm -hmm. Do you think we'd find the big cypress fox squirrel in the prairie? Maybe cutting through the prairie to get to the cypress or the pine land. Or to maybe find food. Yeah, or maybe it could be traveling to the hardwood hammock. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's lots of food in all of these different habitats. If we found them in the cypress, they might be eating the cypress cones or the pine cones in the pines. Very cool. All right, let's do the next one. So our next mammal is a little bit bigger than the first two. And it's probably one that you guys are all familiar with. Hmm, what do you think this one is? It looks like it has a black mask across its face. And that's a good clue. Its tail has stripes across it. So that's another good clue. And we might find this one getting into our trash cans too. So another reason why we wanna make sure we keep our food and garbage tightened, tightened up in the garbage pail so these guys don't get attracted to it. So what do you think this is? I believe it is a raccoon. Yep, this is. This is a raccoon, one of our most common mammals. And raccoons you can find in town, in the cities, around your houses, or out here in this big wild area as well. So Ranger Lisa, here we have a raccoon skull. So very similar to the skunk skull, you can see that it has the two types of teeth that tell us that it's probably also an omnivore. Right. So it's got these canines here, and if you look inside its little mouth, you can see that it has some molars used for grinding. So mm. Ranger Lisa, what habitats do you think we would find these raccoons in. Gosh, you know, I've seen them in about every habitat. Even the mangrove estuary? Even down in the mangrove estuary. Um, you know, they're opportunistic feeders. They might not just feed at night like a lot of these other animals do. 
they might be out in the daytime too. And it just means they're taking that opportunity, if there's food around, to find food. So I've even seen them down along the beaches, scrounging around looking for crabs and other types of small food, fish and other things. So they eat a variety of food. Very cool. Should we do a comparison of the skunk skull versus oh, the raccoon yeah. skull? Look how much bigger it is. Can you hold this yeah. One? This is the raccoon again. And here we have the skunk. So you guys can tell how much smaller um, the skunk is than the raccoon. And for those of you who are not familiar with what the raccoon looks like, maybe this picture clarifies it a little bit. Yeah, raccoon family. Yeah. Neat. Hmm. What else lives in this area? Here's one. I don't see it very often. But it's another animal that we have two types of down here in Florida. Oh yeah? This one is our gray fox. It has a lot of gray on it, but it also has this reddish color. The other type of fox is the red fox. The gray fox is native to South Florida. Sure is soft. It is soft. And the gray fox is probably about the size, maybe a little bit bigger than your house cat. Right. And uh, let's see what it's head and teeth look like. So here we have the top of the fox's skull. So if you guys remember what the raccoon skull looked like, it was a little bit rounder in the snout mm -hmm. area. The fox has more of a elongated snout and that's how its top and bottom jaw lie just like that. Um, so this skull has a little bit of different type teeth. It doesn't have as many of those flat um, grinding molars, but it does have a lot of sharp um, teeth that are look like maybe they're used for incision. So that tells us a lot about the diet as well, which is probably that this animal is mostly a carnivore. Right. Would the gray fox or would the fox eat something aside from meat or other small animals? I think I've heard them getting into chicken coops and into birds' nests and eating eggs. Eggs as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very crazy. Mm -hmm. So lots of small mammals, like maybe even little mice and rats and things like that. Yeah. And this is a good picture of our fox that we have out here in Big Cypress. So going back to what Ranger Lisa said, you guys can kind of see the coloration of the coat as well. It's got some reddish to it. It's got some gray, a little bit of brown. Very neat. Here's my favorite. This one's very well adapted to the water, even though it's a land mammal. It spends a lot of time in the water trying to find food because it eats fish. Fish! And this one has this nice, sleek, dark brown coat. It's very thick. In fact, there's layers of fur under there that keep it warm and insulated when it is swimming in the water. What about this tail? Oh, it's look at that tail. huge, long tail, and it's very thick. Yeah. It actually uses that tail like a rudder back and forth in the water to steer it. They're excellent swimmers. What is this animal? That looks to me like an otter. It is, it's an otter. It's so a would river this, otter. A river otter, right? Because we have, there's river otters and there's sea otters, but mm -hmm. here in South Florida, we only have river otters, which tells us about what kind of water they hang out in, right? Exactly. So the river otter would be found in fresh water. I've seen them in the salt water before, down along um, some bays and in the estuary looking for food, but they mainly stay up here in the freshwater areas in the swamp or rivers. Very cool. So we could expect to see the river otter possibly in a cypress habitat? Yes. Yeah? That would be a perfect spot for him to be in there looking for small fish or mussels and other crustaceans and all kinds of things like that. Cool. So one thing that tells us about this river otter's diet as well is its little paw. So it has these long nails um, and it uses its little paws to open up those muscles so that mm -hmm. it can eat the insides. And if you guys take a look at the teeth, again, another clue as to what kind of things the river otter would eat. So its canines are not quite as sharp. They're a little bit more dull. And it does have some molars back there for grinding. So it eats a variety. And it has that long, thin, kind of flatter head. This whole body is nice and sleek and flat, really um, maneuverable in the water. Yeah, it makes it nice and streamlined, right? Streamlined, that's right. Very cool. Another thing, when you were talking about the feet, you reminded me 
but between its toes, it even has a little bit of webbing, kind of like a duck foot, so that helps it swim. It's a very powerful swimmer. I think that one has a fish in its front paws. It just Looks ate like it. the head off of. <laughs> Oh, here's a really cool animal that lives here in the swamp in South Florida and near our communities in town. Once in a while, we might see this. It's one of two cats that are found in the wild down here in South Florida. We only have two cats that live here. What are the ones we don't have? Hmm. Lions, tigers, hmm. cheetahs, cheetahs, jaguars. Yeah, jaguars. Now they're found at the zoo, right? but we do have two native cats that live here in South Florida. Now, how will we tell the difference, Ranger Cat? So aside from the size, we could tell the difference on uh, the coat here of this cat. So this cat's got some brown in its coat. It's got a tan underbelly. It's got some striping as well. Um, and also, if we take a look at its tail, mm -hmm. the tail is what, where it actually gets its name from because this is a bobcat. So the bobcat has a short little bobbed tail um, which is different than the other big cat that we have here in South Florida, and also the size of it. So the bobcat would be about somewhere around 35 pounds, so larger than your average house cat, but not quite as big as this other large cat that we have out here in South Florida. So if you guys take a look at the skull, looks kind of like what you could imagine your house cat's little skull to look like. It's got some big canines here in the front, and it's got these little teeth that separate it. Um, it has a couple molars, but the molars are also sharp. It doesn't have that those square molars used for grinding, which tells us that the majority of this animal's diet is going to be um, small animals or other types of uh, meat. Right. And, you know, you pointed out the spots and the coloring on this, but that really helps keep it camouflaged when it's out here in the woods spying on its prey and hunting blends right in. So Ranger Lisa, where do you think we would find the bobcat? What types of habitats? Would it be anywhere near the water? It could be, but they don't eat fish, so it's probably going to be back in the brush where it can spy out onto an open prairie, where it can find rabbits and other small mammals mm -hmm. that it might eat for lunch. Wow. And, you know, it keeps its spots all its life. All these fun mottled spots on here it will have as an adult as well. So it's another good way to tell it apart from other cats. Yeah. So our other big cat um, is endangered. Is the Florida bobcat endangered? It's not. It is not. But this next one, right, it is our most endangered species in Florida. And it's our second cat that we have that's native. The only other cat that you might find out in the wild. And here it is. This one's pretty big. It is. Here's a nice picture of it, so keep this in mind as we extend its fur so you can check it out. Wow. This is as big as a person. Yep, as big as a person. So if you guys can see the coat, you see that it doesn't have those spots. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have quite as many colors as the bobcat. So how would you describe the coat of the um, Florida Panther Ranger, Lisa? Well, it's about the color of a deer, isn't it? Kind it of is. a tawny brown. Mm -hmm. It's all solid, mostly one color. It's really soft. It's really soft. All of these furs are very soft and thick. That also helps keep it protected from biting flies and mosquitoes and things like we that. Have plenty of those out here. Right. Should we take a look at its tail? Yeah. Look so guys, check out tail. the length of this tail. This is not a bobtail at all. And what do you think that the tail helps this cat with? Maybe some agility and balance? Balance, right. Yeah. When it's running super fast and veering around all the trees and everything, maybe chasing a deer. That's right. That helps steer it. Yeah. So the Florida panther can be anywhere from 120 to 150 pounds right. for a big male cat. Right. So that weighs a lot more, almost 100 pounds more than the uh, the bobcat that we showed you guys earlier. And check a look at those paws. Huge. Those paws are huge. And when they run, they don't, they retract their claws. They don't run with their claws out. And that helps them sneak up on their prey silently. So if you see a track and it doesn't have the claw marks, it could be a cat. But look at these huge claws that it has. 
This is a panther claw. They're wow. huge. So when they do tackle a deer or another large mammal, they just sink these huge claws into it and that helps them tear it along with their teeth so they can eat it. Wow. So Ranger Lisa, I've never seen a Florida panther, have you? I have. Have you? Yes, I've seen adults and I've seen babies. Oh my gosh, so that is so cool. The adults looked like this one. Yep. And the babies actually have something that makes them look a little bit similar to the bobcat, which is they have spots. Yeah, they have spots when they're babies. Yeah. Why would they have spots when they're babies, but not when they're big? For camouflage. For camouflage. When they're little like this and they're in the den, and if the mother leaves the den to go eat, find something for food, they might she might stay gone for quite a period of time, and these are vulnerable to other predators. Um, they can't defend themselves, and they don't even know how to use their little claws yet, yeah. and they might not be able to see very well yet. So the spots help keep them hidden in the den, in among the saw palmettos and the pines and the cabbage palms. They blend right in so that predators might not be able to find them. Wow. So the babies also have something else that the adult panthers don't have, and that has to do with their eye color. Mm -hmm. So baby panthers have these bright blue eyes, but as they lose their spots um, around six months, their eye color also changes to kind of a more hazel, greenish brown type color. How would this be camouflaged? Well, this looks like it could blend right in with some sawgrass. Mm -hmm. um, so tall grasses in the prairie. Oh, that's where a deer might be feeding. Yeah, that's their that, favorite food. That makes perfect sense. So going back to the claw, while we may not always get the chance to see one of these endangered Florida panthers, maybe we would see signs of the panther. So that could be footprints, that could be claw marks in a tree. Uh, for those of you who have cats, maybe you've seen your house cats scratching couches, oh, yeah. scratching Mine chairs. Mine scratches my chair. Yep. Well, the Florida Panthers do something similar. They have to fine tune and sharpen their nails, so they may do that on a cabbage palm or on a pine tree. Mm -hmm. so sometimes you will see scratch marks in the trees out here in Big Cypress, as well as the paw marks, and that lets us know that maybe they cross the same path that we've been on. All right. I think we have one more to talk about. I don't have the skin of it. But maybe. we definitely have the skull. Yeah, maybe we can describe the skin or the fur of this animal and see if maybe you guys at home or in the classroom can guess what kind of animal this is. Um, so the animal is large. Um, it has brown fur, brownish black fur, right? Mm -hmm. It can, You know, it can. I've seen them that are kind of a cinnamon color and I've seen them that are very black. So it's anywhere in that range. Mm -hmm. Here's our bear skull. Um, so let's do a size comparison of the panther and the bear skull though. Uh, the panther skull is a bit smaller so you can tell that this animal does have a larger head. Um, there is some variations in the teeth too so let's try to turn them this way and see if you guys at home can see the differences. In oh the wow teeth. they're very different. Yeah very different. This one I'm holding is the bear and it has big flat molars. If you take your tongue and rub, rub them across the top of your back teeth can you feel the shape kind of flat with little edges? It's very similar to this bear. And that's because bears eat mostly what? They eat vegetation. Their right. diet is about 80% vegetation. So that's plants, trees, grasses, that type of thing. Right. And what else do they eat? Well, I've seen them up in oak trees, up in the hammocks, eating acorns. Ooh. And they also eat in the spring when new shoots of aquatic plants come up, they'll mash those down and eat them. But one of their favorites is the heart of palm. Ooh. They will take a small cabbage palm, that's our state tree, the mm -hmm. sable palm, and they will rip it apart with their huge claws like this. And they will eat that center part of the cabbage palm that's real soft and supposedly tastes a little bit like cabbage. So Very they cool. eat a little bit of everything. They yeah. also use these big canines to help rip that bark off of the cabbage. Wow, palm. so those canines can also be used for as a tool, right? Yeah, Not necessarily tool. just for pulling apart meat or to help with digestion. Right. Um, they can also use it as a tool. And their, their diet is, like we said, 80% vegetation, about 15% insects, and only 5% meat. Right. Yeah. Now, you had asked me about whiskers. You know, cats have whiskers. We do. 
but bears don't. And here's our picture of the black bear. Black bears, when they hunt, depend mostly on their sense of smell. They have excellent smell. They can smell palmetto berries ripening for over two miles away. Wow. They can also smell your garbage. So this is another one that might get in your garbage. Uh, so good thing to keep in the garage until the next morning when the, when the truck comes. Yeah. They don't hear very well and they don't see very well, but they really use that sense of smell to find their food. Unlike the panther that uh, really uses its eyesight and can see really well at night. Wow. So if we look at this picture, it looks like this bear is up in a tree. Would that be a typical place oh, we would yeah, see a bear? Oh yeah, when he's looking for food, like I said, uh, they'll crawl up there to look for uh, maybe acorns or other food sources. And of course that panther can climb trees really well too, but spends most of its time on the ground. Wow. So is the black bear an endangered species here in South Florida? It's a threatened species and we have about eight different populations of bears around the state. And here in Big Cypress is where we have the second largest population, probably around a thousand bears, call Big Cypress their home. Very cool. Well, thanks for showing all these skins oh, and skulls you bet. Ranger, Lisa. It's kind of neat to see what lives out here. Like Ranger Cat said, we might not be able to see them when we're out here hiking around in the daytime. So it's fun to know what actually lives here and what might be watching us right now. Very cool. All right. Join us next time for another adventure in our Big Cypress Outdoor Classroom. Bye.